What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lose Your Ass Podcast. We have our first returning guest tonight. Our big guy from the Rough uh, Rough Riders. We cannot wait to talk to him. We're going to be talking to him about some of the university things that are going on in Canada as we are not well versed in it. Um, so we're hoping that he can give us some insight on what's going on, how this will affect the CFL draft, how it will affect the CFL season, and uh, just in general, how it's going to affect these student athletes. So we are going to have him on right now, but we are super excited to talk about all going on with Canadian University sports. There he is. Hey, AJ. How's it I going? Guess. Good, good work. Good, thank you. So excited to have you back on to talk about all things going on with the Canadian University, uh, with their f- uh, football canceling the season. First off, what are your thoughts on that as a guy who just finished his last season at university? Uh, it, it hurts. It hurts. Um not only for me, um, but for my friends as well. You know, there's a lot of guys that thought about having a fifth year. Um, and going further than my friends, anyone in their fifth year, anyone that didn't get drafted, anyone that still got something to prove, um, it, it hurts. It hurts to see, man. Um, and now you're going to, and now what this does is puts a lot of people in different, difficult positions to make difficult decisions, right? Right. That's Absolutely. That, so we're not like, we know a little bit about the NCAA here in the States, but we're not completely versed. So you're allowed five years of eligibility up north. Yes. Okay. Five years of eligibility uh, fully, you know, when, no matter what. Um, oh. But you play until a certain age. I think it's, uh, I think it's 25. Okay. Uh, um, so there's, there's a lot of people that, you know, either went through an injury one year, couldn't play. Um, academically, for some reason, couldn't play. Uh, you know, that that's, you know, you add years to that and all of a sudden now you're 24, this is your last year and, and you can't play, you know? So what effect is this going to have on the guys who are 50 or just say they're 22 year old, 50 year seniors, 23 year old, 50 year seniors. Do you know if they're going to be able to get that year of eligibility back? Um, I have, I have no clue. I don't think they've decided yet. Um, I don't think the OUA or, or whatever the league has decided yet. I, I feel like they should be given another year of eligibility. Oh, for sure. Um, but even but even so, again, we we you put them in such a tough bind, right? They either finish school now, because again, we we still have school, right? We still have online schooling. Um, yeah. They either finish school now, um, or you know finish school at 24 and wait a whole year just to either start life or just to wait just to play university football again, you know? So it's, it's, it's hard. It's, I feel for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely going to be it's, a lot of pressure. It's definitely a tough and weird situation that's going on right now. Um, with Canadian, the sports being canceled for the fall, how do you think this is going to affect, you know, the CFL? going forward with their draft process or even just the season this year? I, I, I wish I had an answer to that one. Yeah. I, I, got no, I got no clue. I am, you know, I, I, I'm one of those guys in the dark because, you know, I, I wasn't in the league before, before this happened, right? So this is, this is my precedent right now. I, don't, I yeah. got no idea what to expect. Anyone in the league doesn't know what to expect. Um, the coaches don't know what to do. The owners don't know what to do, you know? So, um, I ha- I don't even have like a speculation of what could happen or how it could go. I ha- I got I have I have never seen anything like this before. Uh, something that could affect literally every aspect of of this game. So it's it's, it's definitely gonna be some kind of an adaption process. Yeah, for sure. I think maybe if you, you did something more like like a senior bowl to try to clash all of the talent, just so that you know these. The seniors don't miss that opportunity to, you know, lack of a better term, expose themselves. Yeah. Right. For, you know, for the CFL, for the NFL, because this is that one opportunity. that we, I was watching the ESPYs last night, and I was getting emotional. 
Like, <laughs> they were talking about the seniors. I'm like, they really losing. Not only that, that year of life, but yeah. that possible chance. Everybody, you know, that senior year, they just click sometimes, and they become the better athlete. That's it. You're right. You, you never know when it'll hit you, right? You, you know, guys are playing since, you know, they're eight, nine, ten. You never know when it'll hit you, but when it does, like a storm, you know, and, and right. a lot of those guys, you know, might not get that opportunity to even say, you know, I tried and I failed, you know? Yeah, and that's the other crazy thing. I feel like, especially, I know you did, a large leap in your senior year. I mean, we saw it with Joe Burrow down here. We saw, you know, you up there, and I'm sure many other people up there, their senior years is what's got them drafted and what has got them either signed or, you know, Ryson, our friend Ryson uh, with the Giants got him signed. You know, it's uh-huh. it's such a tough thing because there are these, you know, we they put all their effort into this, and every year you're improving, and senior year is kind of your peak, and, how do you how do you even judge that now going forward? It, it's so hard. Like I even even for me personally, like if if I were to take another fifth year of eligibility, I feel like I would have only got better too. Yeah. You know, I I feel like like I of course every athlete's gonna be like I, I'm not at my peak, but like I really feel like I'm not at my peak yet. And I could I could only imagine the guys that actually have some you know have have more to prove or have have more to say or have more to do. You know. Yeah. It's so true because so many of those guys, I mean, I just think down here and I'm sure up there too, um, they are current backups for these seniors. And once they get in that situation where they could be the man, they show why they're the man. And and now yeah. they're, you know, that's, is is there a potential? And, and I've been thinking this over. Is there a potential that these football, cross country, everything that's done in the fall could be potentially move to the spring especially with football where they have that opportunity to get drafted. I think so, but I also think it's difficult because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is a university um, and they, and they, they do a lot of other things, you know, like we got spring sports as well. Um, I think there's a possibility that it may be a move to summer. Um, okay. Cause you know, these, these are guys that, you know, train year round anyway, right. Whether it be cost country, whether it be football. Absolutely. These guys play year round anyway, so I I feel like that that, that may be the most likely situation. Um, I don't think a shortened season is, is going to happen here. Um, yeah, I, I, that's that's what I think, honestly. But and even with a shortened season, it takes so long—not even so long, but it takes a while to kind of get into your groove and find your your rhythm. Like once you're at that last. Uh, during the downhill stretch in the season, you kind of see what's going on when you get those bowl games, the championships, everything going on. It's, it's, it makes you who, who you become as a player is those big games. And exactly. you, need, you need that opportunity to, to prepare for them by having these regular season games that though they mean something, they don't mean as much. Mm-hmm. And even here again, uh, we only play what eight regular season games. Oh yeah. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like that, that's insane. <laughs> we only we only play. It's not like we have. You know, I don't I don't know how many they got down there, but like you know, you have you have sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. I would say like around sixteen, right, James? Okay. It, it, uh, twelve regular season. Twelve, uh, and then and then uh, you have all your bowl games, everything. It ends up if you make it all the way, it ends up being about sixteen or seventeen games. No, there you go. Yeah, we, we got eight. Um, eight regular season to determine your placing. Uh, and then you got, you know, playoff game, playoff game, playoff game. That's, that's, oh, wow. That's it. That's, that's, that's it. Um, three for your conference, uh, extra two for um, all of Canada. So, wow. um, we, even even without bowl games, you only got eight. So, it's like, you know, that, that that's crazy. And, and that's, why I'm, I, that's why also why I think there's no possibility for a short season. Because what? You're going to shorten that down to six? Yeah, yeah. how do you shorten that? Yeah. How are you shorten how are you shorting an already short season, you know? It'd be different with almost basketball. You can shorten it. Hockey, I'm sure you can shorten yeah. it. But football is like... Well, you know, we only, we only got eight games. Exactly, so. yeah. That's crazy. You know, the potential risk with pushing it back, too, is that you have multi-sport athletes that would have to make a huge decision. In I, their I, life. I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're not doing football and baseball at the same time. You're not doing football and track at the same time either. That's exactly it. You're right. 
You have two totally different conditioning mm -hmm. methods, mm -hmm. and you can't lift the injury. Sure. Uh, yeah. And that, and then put on top of that, having two sports going on at the same time for a student is absolutely ins it's so hard for oh, them yeah. then to keep up with their work and and have a life like college is the best time of your life and to say oh i'm doing these two sports while i'm you know you could be double majoring in something also i'm looking for internships for after i'm done because i have to get a job after i'm done in case i don't get drafted in case i don't get picked up i need to have a backup plan it's I feel so bad for these seniors. I mean, AJ, I know I'm sure you have tons of guys on your, your from university that, you know, went back for a fifth year or are in their uh, fourth year that potentially will be drafted. What's the, what's the thought process that they're going through? Um, and yeah, I, I do know a few. And a lot of them are thinking to themselves, um, do I wait a year to play football again or do I start life? Right. That, that, that's such a hard one because, again, yeah. I, I, you know, for a lot of us, again, I've been playing football since grade four. I cannot imagine the last time I went a year without playing a sport. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At wow. a competitive level. You know what I'm saying? So you either, you either hang on to that for a little bit or you hit reality. You know, I got to find a job. Yeah. I got I to gotta start something. I got to find – I got to start life. I got to get some money. I got to get a, right. you know, get a house and all this. Yeah, that's the, that's the other part about it is too. Like, to, to not to start. Obviously, twenty four, twenty five is still very young to be starting your life. I mean, lawyers start their professional co career at twenty five, but yeah. when you're hitting that twenty four, twenty five, it's kind of like, okay, I need something to do in case this doesn't. And God forbid you get a, an injury during the season, mm -hmm. you know, where your career's done, knees, whatever. That's also a risk you're taking. It, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. insane. It's so still, we're still getting new to the CFL. I know that you're new to the CFL as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there a possibility for their fifth year, these fifth year seniors to potentially go into training camp for, for the CFL and maybe see if, if they make it? Is that a I, possibility? I, I think so. I think it is. Um, I think with the right amount of tape and just because of, you know, right now everyone's on a level playing field, right? There's no competitive football. So, um, sure. you know, I feel like a lot of people are going to start taking chances. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of teams might start taking shots and just, you know, bring them to camp or just, just see what's, see what's up and see what they got. We um, kinda, and we also don't know when the American players are going to be able to go back up. You know, yeah, we've had a couple, yeah. we've had a couple of yeah. uh, great guys come on our show, American guys that are playing in the CFL that also, we have to say, uh, Co co-sign what you said about that Canadian players do not get the exposure that they need that they deserve. Micah Alway was one of them. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's another thing is like these American players who are supposed to be going up there, they're spending their off season with their family. We don't know when they're gonna be up there. And a lot of these teams are are uh really rebuilding. Like a couple like the BC Lions are rebuilding. Uh the Red Blacks had a rough season and they're you know, there's tons of these teams that are rebuilding that we don't know when the next time they're all going to be together is. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's a huge part of it. Coaches as well. The, you know, a lot of, I'm, I'm sure a lot of coaches aren't even from the province that they're, that they're coaching it. Right. Right. So there's so, there's so many factors that, that, that come into play. Uh, we don't know when the players will be able to come back again. And, and it's hard, you know, you see the NBA doing this, um, you know, thing at Disney world where they, where they hold players for 14 days, of isolation. I, I don't think it's possible for football because there's just too many moving pieces, right? Way too many moving pieces. You got a whole facility for to run. And, yeah. and, and and that's the other thing. At this point, these NBA teams, their um their rosters are set. Like they're no one's leaving. Like they yeah. can't really cut anyone at this time. Like it's the beginning of the CFL season, beginning of the NFL kind of NFL training camp would have been starting around now. We would have seen who was getting dropped. It's kind of hard to drop guys and add guys when you're going through a global pandemic and you don't know yep. where they've been. Yep. Yeah. So I this is chaos. I had an Absolute idea. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? I, so, I had an idea. I am not on the CFL uh, board of oh. directors, but if I was, why not, you know, not cancel the 2020 season, postpone it to 2021, 
maybe see if they can take that spring league approach. And I think that they've been working on this um, where they'll be able to be uh, kind of like the XFL was and have that prime time that they can, you know, go in Canada, they could, you know, show in Canada, but also maybe a Fox sports where these kids that wouldn't be getting this exposure, have this exposure. And it's an additional, you know, we saw how successful the XFL was before this. If we could do that with the CFL, I think that that would help everyone. No, yeah, I, I, that, I see what you're saying. Um, I think I read somewhere, though, that if we were to postpone it or cancel this whole season, um, we couldn't afford the blowback. Um, yeah. I, our, our, big, our, our big income is, you know, fans and, and jerseys right. and merchandise and stuff like that. And I think the fear was if we postpone this season or if we cancel this season, there will be no league next year for us to play in. You're right. I did read that there was. All right, a we're pot- avoiding that game plan. Yeah, <laughs> and that would be that'd be <laughs> devastating to just make the league, and all of a sudden there's none. <laughs> that's that's true. That's, that's so cool. true. And I did read something uh, now that I remember about the potential money issues that mm-hmm. might be happening. That would be like, crazy. Like just even think of something like that because that would be between the CFL and the XFL. The mass amount of football players that you would just see, like, randomly. Gone, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, jobless. No, clueless. Again, we, we're, we, we've been, we are guys that have been playing competitive football since before we could even imagine. Yeah. You know? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the dream gone. And it's not because of skill. It's not because of age. It's not because of my knees hurt, hurt, my back hurt. It's because the league couldn't sustain itself no more. And that, that one hurts the most. That one really hurts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That, that's the difficult part of this whole is that, like, and even with the XFL, because the XFL was doing so well here. Like, it really was. We, we've, yeah. spoken, we've spoken to tons of XFL guys, some XFL guys that played up there that, you know, came back hoping for the exposure. And it was doing very well. And we could even see that a lot of these guys got signed. Like they were getting signed to these NFL yep. teams and good, decent deals with these NFL teams, like, you know, being the backup quarterback, whatever it is. So that's, that's this, the sticky situation is that it could have been a great developmental type thing for, for the, you know, uh, for the NFL, but the money is an issue. You can't, no one could have, I mean, even the biggest companies in the world are having to, to cut, you know, Yep. Many employees, reduced pay. It's out of control. Like past football, past all sports, it, it's really just to the economy, to all these people that are working. The unemployment rate I know here is the highest it's been since I think the Ever. 2008. I, I think even higher than the 2008 crash that we had. It's, yeah, I think it's just narrowly above the, the, the Great Depression as well. Yeah. Um, insane. Vicious. Holy. It is. Oh my gosh. This is why so, I just be playing Madden. <laughs> time yeah. to start looking at pro wrestling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I might become a golfer now. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> hey. That'd be fun. Let's get on the course. I'm ready to go. <laughs> AJ, I wouldn't put, I would not put wrestling not in your future. I could see you as a wrestler spearing guys, doing the edge spear. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I can see it. I've, I've never done it before except for, you know, with, with other people. Um, <laughs> we won't talk about it. <laughs> uh, I, I can see it. I mean, I, I, I'm an athletic guy. I feel yeah. like I can get I do it. But there's uh, one of my own teammates, uh, his name is Joe Brianhart. He was a wrestler too. Um and what's necessary to be good at it is <laughs> it's, a whole different, it's a whole different monster. We get you have the you have the charisma, you have the strength. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're very fun. Fo- have to come. Yeah. <laughs> have to come. Grappling for what, 15 minutes straight. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no joke. I think that was the that was the Rocks gig, right? After he left Miami, he went to the CFL and then Calgary he, played with Calgary. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. I and couldn't it, imagine. Well, it, it, must, it was so much easier coming to come over here. <laughs> All I gotta do is run. Okay. 
<laughs> and now he is, I think, what was it, 2017 or 2018, he was the highest grossing um, actor. So, AJ, you could be the next rock. I like where this conversation went. <laughs> <laughs> it went from a sad thing to a happy thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm the next rock. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my night. I, I win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> AJ, it's always great having you on. Thank you so much for coming and talking about this unfortunate thing that happened at the university and, you know, your potential future wrestling career. (laughs) Thank you very much for having me. And, you know, thank you for seeing my potential. You know, it it takes, it takes friends to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I I wouldn't be here without you guys. (laughs) Thank you for the support, you know? (laughs) AJ, you are the best. Thank you so much, and we cannot wait to see you when the CFL gets started, because it will get started. Hopefully, fingers crossed, and, and knocking on wood and all that stuff. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming on. Stay safe, stay well, buddy. Yes. All you, you too, you too. Bye-bye. AJ, all right. always all right. fantastic yeah. to have. He is just a great dude. So much He's swag. A, that's so a much good. swag. Yeah, um, he's like one of those people that like I just want to have on like all the time. Every day. <laughs> he's great. He's absolutely great. And it was so nice to talk to him about university and to get someone's perspective, who was in that situ- who who you know just graduated and got uh, you know drafted. So it was good to have his perspective, and we're really glad for our Canadian fans to have someone like that who can teach us a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, he's definitely. Gonna, he's like our. Official consultant. Milton, yes. To the CFL. Uh, we will definitely be talking more CFL stuff coming up, though, with Alec Bazi. Bazi. I got to get his name right, but I believe it's Bazi. Um, absolutely awesome guy. Went yep. to Marshall. An, another American that is oh. up there. He's been there. Yes. Uh, been there since 2012, so we'll get his perspective. And I'm also interested because we did hear from Shaq Evans that uh, the Rough Riders have the best fans. He has been around the league for a while. I want to know who has the best fans. Ooh. We might get him into a little bit oh. of trouble. Shots fired? I, we want to see. I, I'm sure the Rough Riders have great fans. I'm sure they're all great fans, but we got we to gotta know. Saskatchewan. You ever see that movie? No. What? You've never seen Grown Ups? No, I don't think I have. Bruh. I'm more of a romantic comedy person, which is why the ladies love me. Yeah. <laughs> and that is getting deleted. <laughs> but, um, all right, we will be back later with some Alex Bazzi. You good, James? I'm good. Stay safe. Stay well, everybody. We're not signing off, but okay. Stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs>